Have you ever wondered if you have faith? Honestly, how do we really know? Well, no guessing needed because God spells it out pretty clearly right in his word. Come along and see. In the Christian community, faith means trusting that God loves us, that he forgives our sins, provides for, and protects us. But how much faith do we need for him to do all of that? Jesus said that even the tiniest amount of faith, as small as a mustard seed, can work miracles. A mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds on earth and can grow into a tree 20 feet tall. Today we focus on faith by memorizing several verses which give us perspective on what it is, how we get it, and how we are to live our lives by it. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The hope this verse is referring to is the hope we have in God, a confidence that simply can't be shaken. His very existence, that's the foundation of our faith. To learn this verse, let's use keywords. Faith is confidence and assurance. Again with me, faith is confidence and assurance. Good. No one is more worthy of our faith, confidence, and assurance than God Almighty. To make it easier to learn these two phrases, let's break them up into two parts. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. Can you say it with me? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. Yes, our God-given faith gives us that confidence. Now the last part, an assurance about what we do not see. Say it again and assurance about what we do not see. We don't visually see God, but we know he is there. We breathe assured that there's air all around us even though we can't see it, right? Now let's put the whole verse together. Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That was easy. So we know our faith is belief in God and despite what we don't see, we trust that he has our backs. How do we get this faith? Our next verse tells us. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith doesn't just come to us out of the blue. Faith is our response to God's faithfulness as he guides us by his word. Let's learn this verse. Here's the first phrase. So then faith comes by hearing. Again, so then faith comes by hearing. That's right. Now the second phrase, and hearing by the word of God. Once more, and hearing by the word of God. And now the complete verse, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. While physical food feeds our bodies, it's the spiritual nourishment within God's word that gives us life-sustaining faith. We can't separate faith from the God we believe in. So faith is not just a thing we keep in our back pocket for a rainy day. Faith is alive, and at its very core, faith should be how we live. Our next verse talks about just that. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. Now with me. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we live by faith, not by sight. Simply put, we should live our lives keeping our focus on who we trust, especially because we can't often see what he's doing for us. Living by faith also means acting on that faith because without action, our faith is dead. Our final verse teaches us another important truth about faith. Hebrews 11.6, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. This verse defines faith as believing two things about God. He exists and he rewards our sincere efforts to seek him. Three short phrases. Come on, we're on a roll. We can't stop now. Let's learn the first phrase. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Again, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's right. Now let's learn the second phrase. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. One more time. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. 
great. Now the final phrase, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Again, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. There you go. You know what? By your very actions today, learning these verses, you are seeking him and he will reward you for it. You're ready to say the entire verse now, right? Hebrews 11.6, and without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Four verses about faith. I know we tackled a lot today, but I knew you could. Good for you for hanging in there. Okay, so now what? What do you do with the verses you've learned? Do you depend on your memory? Well, you could, but how about backing them up? just like you do important documents on your computer. You can write them on cards, in a notebook, or put them in an app. I use several apps, like one called Bible Memory and another called Flashcards Deluxe. You could even save these verses in a faith category in your app for quick reference. The important thing is to preserve them so that you can review them. How often? Well, that's really up to you. Let's review our faith verses one last time. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Romans 10.17 So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we live by faith, not by sight. Hebrews 11.6 And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Until next time, go with God and have faith in his goodness as you learn scripture by heart.